Welcome to another Fantasy Goodfellas video where we talk about the top 30 wide receiver rankings for week 9. You ready? The Fantasy Goodfellas. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. Ah. Rolling on the field. Good All right, before we get started, I want to remind you that these are not our rankings. And what I know is you're going to start the wide receivers that you like or that you have on your roster. What I'm doing is reminding you what's going on this week or how the players have performed past week and how they're trending. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get into what the rankings ended up with last week. Now, this was the rankings. You had DeAndre Hopkins as the top wide receiver, which was surprising. But you got number four, Rashid Shahid. Uh, those are some, you got Dotson at number seven. You got Jamison Crowder. I think, look, you have three Washington uh, Commanders receivers in the top 15. Something to pay attention. Sam Howe's looking good. And a couple other things. Jerry Judy got in there. And I think that is Jordan Addison played well, but that's with Cousins and Armandra St. Brown got in there. And so this is what it looks like. If you're looking to kind of who to start, this is what it's, what's trending. And that's what we're going to try to kind of get to because we know the rankings. You guys always have an opinion about it. You put it, your opinions in the comment sections and we'll try to answer them. But let's just get started to this week's rankings. At number one, you got Tyreek Hill at the Kansas City Chiefs, which is being played in Germany. And Tyreek Hill is having an amazing season so far. Uh, we have no problem. You got Tyreek Hill. You're going to play him. What is he projected to do? He's projected to be the top wide receiver. We'll see if that plays out. At number two, Jamar Chase versus the Buffalo Bills. Now, Chase had a decent game, not a spectacular game, a decent game. And he had 92 total yards if you count and subtract the eight rushing yards and one rushing t TD. So Chase is kind of coming back into his own. At number three, Stephon Diggs at the Cincinnati Bengals. Probably is going to be a shootout. But uh, Stephon Diggs uh, had only had 70 receiving yards but had nine receptions. And again, these receivers are going to be starting anyways. Uh, number four, A.J. Brown versus the Dallas Cowboys. What can we say about him? Number five, C.D. Lamb at the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, if you look at C.D. Lamb, now they're going against a good Philadelphia Eagles defense. And if I wanted to just see how he's trending, he's been okay, but uh, seems to be picking up. And TD-wise, he's only had three TDs on the season. That's something to... You expect a little bit more from a fifth-ranked wide receiver this week. Uh, number six, Cooper Cup at the Green Bay Packers. If there's a game that Cup can get back to being himself, I think it's going to be this game going against the Green Bay Packers. Uh, number seven, you got Keenan Allen at the New York Jets. And again, the Chargers haven't been playing lights out, and I think that's something to be concerned about. But here's week eight. And he had 69 receiving yards. As a team, Herbert threw 298, but it was so spread out, nobody performed spectacular except maybe Austin Eckler. And number eight, you got Puka Nakua versus at the Green Bay Packers. And again, should be a decent game, but there's no way you're going to have two in the top ten. That's where I think that we're going to run into a wall. They're putting two... Los Angeles Rams receivers in the top eight. Don't expect that to happen. At number nine, Devontae Adams at the New York Giants. Now, that Los Angeles Raiders offense looked tr horrible. And if you look overall, Jimmy Garoppolo should not have stats like this. He's too experienced, and he's got too good of wide receivers to have a game like this where you have Devontae Adams catch one and a Jacoby Myers only catch one. Heartbreaking if you're a Devontae Adams owner. At uh, number 10, Jalen Waddell at the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, surprisingly, the Kansas City Chiefs kicked, got their butts kicked by the Denver Broncos. 
This is the matchup that everybody's curious about because Miami beat the Denver Broncos by 70 and Kansas City got beat by the Denver Broncos. So it's going to be interesting to see how that game plays out. In our number 11, Adam Thielen versus the Indianapolis Colts. Adam Thielen is looking good of late, looking good on the season. And if you just want to look at how he came in each and every week up until this point, Let's see, my stat engine is taking a second to kind of function, but he's been decent. Um, you, I think he can perform well, but when he doesn't do well, he really doesn't do well. At number 12, Nico Collins versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Nico Collins started the season really well and then it's kind of drifted away. So here he's got... With the bye week and all that, he looks. That's what it looks like for he's trending. Uh, number thirteen, you got Garrett Wilson versus the Los Angeles Chargers. I think this is the week Garrett Wilson can kind of really make a name for himself. I think the yak, the yards after catch, might be good this week. Just again going against that defense of the Chargers, I think they have a chance. Uh, number fourteen, Mike Evans at the Houston Texans. Mike Evans. Got a, a touchdown this week, 39 receiving yards. That was good for being the 20th ranked wide receiver. Although you just expect more with Mike Evans. It just shows you how much Tom Brady made Mike Evans look good. Now, number 15, DJ Moore at the New Orleans Saints. And I think we have ourselves a quarterback controversy. Uh, Fields isn't playing. You got the backup doing well and looking hungry. So this is going to be interesting to see moving forward. I think this is the game that we need to pay attention if Fields is even is worth keeping for the rest of the season. Uh, number 16, DK Metcalf at the Baltimore Ravens. DK should be doing much better. I mean, the guy is too talented not to only have 67 receiving yards. And look at this. He only caught 5 of 14. That is not good. Expect more from a talented guy like Metcalf. At number 17, you got DeAndre Hopkins at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I've been dogging Hopkins out all season. And uh, what has he done? Well, he had his second best receiving yardage game. But it was the TDs that really exploded. So he didn't have no TDs up until this point and then explodes with three. What can we expect in week nine? I think he's going to regress back to what he was, but the quarterback situation is much different. So DeAndre Hopkins can be heating up. At number 18, Zay Flowers versus the Seattle Seahawks. Now, this is where Flowers is in between. You know how that Baltimore Ravens offense goes? One week it might be a running game. Next week it might be a passing game. Next week... One receiver might stand out. Next week, it's a tight end game. It's just all over the place, and I think that's what makes Baltimore Ravens' offense uh, a, a headache just because you don't know who's going to go off. Zay Flowers could have cost you this week, but it's still Zay Flowers, still the best receiver on that team. Uh, number 19, Chris Alave versus the Chicago Bears. Chris Alave has been out, I believe, but... Um, Guess not. See, this is where reminding everyone why I do these stats for myself is to remind me what's going on. But Alave had 50, 46 receiving yards. Now, if you want to go back the week before, he had 57 receiving yards. Go back the week before, 96. So I expect him to be right around that 60 receiving yards again. At number 20, Jordan Addison at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, is I believe we might need to have um, Justin Jefferson out another week, but uh, Addison did well. He was the 12th ranked wide receiver in week eight. He did that with 82 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown. So his TDs on the season, uh, let's see, he's almost had a TD every game. So that looks really good. So if you're an Addison owner, you should be uh, pretty happy. Uh, number 21, Terry McLaurin at the New England Patriots. Now, this is the first wide receiver from the Commanders 
that we have seen so far. And we saw last week you had three in like the top 20. So I should we should expect McLaurin to do well just because Sam Howell's playing so well. I like Sam Howell. And number 22, George Pickens versus the Tennessee Titans. And George Pickens is the stud on that team. So no matter what's going on, you can expect Pickens to see a lot of action. And here's the quick question here. You had Deontay Johnson return. How is that going to affect Pickens? Well, the targets definitely have changed. And so that's going to be something to pay attention to. At number 23, Jacoby Myers versus the New York Giants. Thank God Myers had an awful game because that helped me win a game and win my matchup in this week's fantasy football. He only had one reception for 19 yards. Thank God it was only 19 yards. Uh, but you expect more from Garoppolo. And again, as poorly as Garoppolo played last week, now you have two wide receivers from the Las Vegas Raiders in the top 23, top 30. At number 24, Gabe Davis at the Cincinnati Bengals. They got Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis. You expect them to do well. This is going to be a highly watched, very important matchup. I think Gabe Davis can do well. At number 25, you got Michael Pittman Jr. at the Carolina Panthers. As long as Minshew's your quarterback, Pittman's going to do well. That's my belief moving forward. So pay attention to when Minshew starts. At 26, Chris Godwin at the Houston Texans. Now, this is, again, this is what I don't understand. You got Baker Mayfield hasn't been lighting it up. Now you expect two Tampa Bay receivers to be in the top 30. I think that's a stretch. At 27, Tyler Lockett at the Baltimore Ravens. This is where on that Seattle offense, you got you got a couple ballers, right? You got Tyler Lockett's been steady. DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith Nigba, Jigba, whatever. I have to look it up. Uh, but he got into the end zone, so that was important. So too many good receivers, not for that team to do well, but just where does that ball go to? At 28, Devonta Smith versus the Dallas Cowboys. It's been crazy because ever since that argument with on the sideline between Hertz and A.J. Brown, it's been the A.J. Brown show. So here you have Devontae Smith, 99 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. So there's a lot to be spread out. I don't think it's going to be the same this week. So pay attention to that as they go against the Dallas Cowboys. At 29, you got Amari Cooper versus the Arizona Cardinals. If they start another quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals, I think it's going to be a heavily weighted Cleveland Brown offense. And so I like uh, Amari Cooper there. And at number 30, Tank Dell versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Again, nothing stands out that you should have two Houston Texans receivers in the top 30. But once again, that's what they do. So... Pay attention to that stuff. That's what Bart gets me. You see these predictions. And remember, this isn't our predictions. We're reacting to them just as much as you do. But two Houston Texans receivers in the top 30. No, no. Pretty much a stretch. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And good luck this week. Those fantasy Man. good fellas. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. Oh, on the field. Good job.